So here we're going to discuss intramolecular Claisen condensations, which is called the Diekmann reaction. And this is covered in the carboxylic acids and derivatives, nucleophilic acyl substitution, and alpha substitution reactions chapter. So the first thing that we'll consider is the reaction mechanism for a Diekmann reaction. And a Diekmann reaction is an intramolecular reaction of a diester to form a cyclic beta keto ester. So let's have a look at an example of this reaction. And here we're going to start with diethyl hexane dioate, which is this compound here. And it's a symmetrical system, so we can have two different alpha positions here and here, which are adjacent to the carbonyls, and these positions are identical. So this alpha position is identical to this one here. And in the presence of ethoxide, we're going to deprotonate one of those alpha positions and we remove a hydrogen from the alpha position and we will form an ester enolate ion, which is shown here. And you'll notice that we've matched the base, the ethoxide ion, to the ester side chain. And that's to ensure that if there's any direct attack at the carbonyl group, pushing the electrons up and down the carbonyl, kicking out OET minus, we'll just regenerate the ethyl ester. So we match the base with the ester side chain. So now we've got an ester enolate ion. And as you can see in this step, we can get a cyclization reaction. We can take the electrons from this oxygen through the carbon-carbon double bond, attack the carbonyl of the other ester, pushing our electrons up onto the oxygen, back down again to kicking out OET- as a leaving group. And this reaction leads to the formation of this five-membered ring. Both of these steps here, the cyclization and the deprotonation step, are reversible. But when this five-membered ring is formed, the equilibrium is drawn towards this product here because it contains a very acidic hydrogen atom on a carbon in between two carbonyl groups. So as soon as the five-membered ring is formed, it's deprotonated by the ethoxide ion. The equilibrium lies heavily onto this side and we can stabilize this negative charge on this oxygen and indeed we can push the electron density and stabilize it on the oxygen in the carbonyl group of the ester. Finally at the end of the reaction on acidic workup we can reprotonate this ester enolate ion here and we can form a cyclic beta keto ester which is the product of this reaction. So here we've considered a symmetrical diester. Let's now have a look at selectivity when we use an unsymmetrical 1,7 diester. And in this case, we're looking at cyclization of a 1,7 diester to form a beta keto ester with a six membered ring. So here is this example. Here we have a 1,7 diester, and you'll notice it's unsymmetrical. At the six position of the chain, we've introduced a methyl substituent. So we've still got two alpha positions here, at carbon atoms two and six, but, but clearly they are different. If we deprotonate at carbon atom two and cyclize onto the ester at position seven, then we form this six-membered ring here. If we deprotonate at position six and cyclize onto this carbonyl at position one, then we would land up with this six-membered ring here. And you'll notice that in the reaction, only this six-membered ring is formed, not this one here. So first of all, we'll look at how this six-membered ring is formed, and we'll look at the reaction mechanism in detail. So the first thing that will happen is we'll deprotonate at the alpha position, at position 2, and we'll form this ester enolate ion. This ester enolate ion can then cyclize, we can take the electron density, and attack the carbonyl group of the other ester in a cyclization reaction, kicking out OET minus as a leaving group. And again, both of these steps, the deprotonation and the cyclization, will be reversible. However, when we make the six-membered ring now, we can readily deprotonate the hydrogen atom in between the two carbonyls. The equilibrium lies towards the right-hand side here, because the anion is stabilized by delocalization over the ester and the ketone, so this is pushing the equilibrium now towards the desired product. The end of the reaction, we then protonate this enolate ion and we form this six-membered ring. So now what we'll have a look at is why this six-membered ring isn't formed from the reaction. 
So now what we're going to consider is deprotonating at position 6 and cyclizing onto the carbonyl at position 1. So we can take ethoxide ion, we can deprotonate the hydrogen atom at this alpha position and we form this ester enolate ion. As you might expect, this ester enolate ion can now cyclize and we can form a six-membered ring, as we've seen earlier on, which is shown here. But there's one key difference about this six-membered ring to the six-membered ring that we saw earlier, and that is that we have no acidic hydrogen atom in between the two carbonyl groups. It cannot be deprotonated to form a stabilized enolate ion. So what happens is, as soon as this six-membered ring is formed, we can go back again now to the starting material. The ethoxide ion can attack the carbonyl. We can open up the ring to reform the enolate ion, and that could now be protonated to give me the starting material. And then it can cyclize from position 2 to position 7 to form this six-membered ring here. So when we're using unsymmetrical 1,7 diesters, typically you're going to get a very selective cyclization, and in this case you're going to form this six-membered ring rather than this one here.